welcome, welcome to Company Aliens Together Podcast. Well, we are absolutely sure we don't know everything. I am Zach Know Your Mama Towers. <laughs> and I'm Kelsey No Middle Name Dara. That's correct. How you doing, <laughs> Zach? You poem? I am so good. I feel like we should just be honest and tell them that we we're recording these all like oh, in one day. We would never lie. Never. Not once have I lied in my life. Me don't, don't Google it. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god, I wish okay, I wish. <sighs> I wish there were were a way to tell if someone was lying, it, like for sure, like definitively. What would that even look like? I don't know. Uh, uh, maybe a a prick of a of a a, bl- a drop of blood. <laughs> <laughs> Wait, like a drop of blood just falls from the sky when no, someone lies. Like lands someone on says your eye? something and you're like, say it again, and then you prick them, and then you take the blood and you test it, and like the blood's not dog. I'm not going to lie to you. That seems like such an arduous process. Yeah. Rather than just like their nose grows. Oh, okay. Okay. Yes. I like that one. (laughs) But what if you wanted like a little bit of a bigger nose and you're like, I love your haircut. (gasps) (gasps) Don't talk about my hair like that. Yes. We are batch recording because Zachary, you're going to Italy. I'm going to Italy, bitches. You're going all over. I'm going to Italy. I am. I'm very, I will say power of manifestation. Mm. I went to London for the first time ever in April. So fun. And when I got back, I was like, well, I went to Germany, England, and uh, Sweden. And when I got back, I was like, I want work to take me back to Europe. (sighs) And then like literally a month later, I got an avail check for this Mediterranean cruise. And it's going to be Italy, like places like Palermo, um, Sicily, Ibiza, Monaco. (laughs) Ibiza. Ibiza. Yeah. And I'm so excited. I'm, I'm, I can't, I, those, there's no words beyond that. I'm just so excited. It's going to be, there is nothing like international travel. I, but it's a little scary, right? Oh, for sure. Cause you're, it's so much newness. New, it's so much newness. And in my head, even though I have traveled internationally, I'm like, no one's going to understand me. <laughs> I'm the only English speaker. Like I'm going to be on like, a lost. cruise ship full of Americans. Yeah, that's the other thing. It's like, ugh, I want it to be like all Italian or French men. No, no, I don't think drag Italian a country right now. French men. No, I'm not about to drag their country. I don't think a bunch of Italian and Frenchmen are going on their own cruises. They're not like, let's go see the coastal line. <laughs> okay. Booker straight to jail. That was the most <laughs> offensive. Yeah, no, no, that was bad. I loved it every second. Um, no, but like we go, I've been on eight cruises out of Florida. Out of Florida to where? Another country. Yeah, you're but not like, going to fucking Texas. The Caribbean is basically America. Don't, don't it's, do that. It's Southern Just North cancel America. Him. Southern North America. <laughs> cancel. Well, in the way that it's South America, it is America. Zachary, leave. Bitch, I just laid down some cold hard facts that you weren't able to take. Don't Google it. I didn't even real. I didn't even mean for me to be mentioning this that we're batch recording episodes, which is why we're in the same um, outfits. That is because you're going on a cruise, and this is about cruises. Yeah, I mean that's why. So you didn't even pick up on that when no. I because you guys I, when I pitched to Kelsey the batch recording, I was like this thing, this thing, the cruise industry, and she's like, what the fuck? Why the <laughs> cruise industry? She's like, I guess there can be some crazy stories. I okay. Let me just say, first of all, LOL, I just thought you were being so creative. I, I was mean, like, that's always an option. Look at him just reaching out truly into a sector we've never covered. But then it reminded me of one of my favorite, like, investigative reporting stories that Hassan Minaj's team did. And my friend actually wrote for that episode. I didn't realize it. Shout out Seth Whiteberg. Ow. And they did a whole like twenty minute piece An expose on the cruise ship industry. You might need to bring those things to the table. Okay, because I'll never forget it because I remember from my ex boyfriend's dirty thirty, I planned a surprise cruise vacation with him and like ten of his closest friends. Wait, this sounds familiar. Yeah, I oh, did. You it. invited me, I think. Oh, why weren't you were out of town? Probably. Or you just were like, I, I don't know any of these people. Cruise, yeah. Well, there was a lot of gays on it because it was out of LA, essentially. Sure, Long Beach. Yeah. And was we it like went, a two-day cruise? It was three days. We went down to Mexico and back? Honestly, the Baja? 
probably the perfect amount of time to be on a ship. Yes, three but days. as soon as I came back, I was like, I'm never going on a cruise again because then I watched the Hassan Minaj thing and I was like, ooh. Wait, should we put a pin in this and like do yeah. other stuff first? Yeah, but Zach. What that was Kelsey, that was a great like teaser. That was a great ooh. teaser. And I'm never going on one I'm again. Never going but on. But until we get to that. Bing bong. Housekeeping. housekeeping. Zach, I got some good housekeeping news. Is it about your titties? My titty ain't cancerous fuck yeah dude yeah and also i'm so sorry i did not follow up <laughs> since i went to that appointment with you man um i guess i figured no news is good you news. were literally just like out of sight out of mind you're not gonna have breast cancer if i can't see you that's literally me with any boobs out of sight out of mind i'm like I forgot boobs exist until Honestly, this girl walked in here. It makes sense why you're friends with a lot of flat chested women. I like that. Because out of sight, out of mind, you're not attracted to them. You don't want to see them. I just want them to be manageable, which yours are. It's it's here. So, it, but here's the thing it's not cancer, but it is what's called a complicated cyst. <gasps> it's complicated. On Facebook, it's complicated. <laughs> I literally was like, Mm, what and she was like don't let the name like scare you too much it just means it's complicated because like they're on the sonogram and the mammogram there's like definitely stuff in it and it could be nothing it could just be fluid or it could be it could turn into something in six months so she was like we monitor it and it was kind of funny because she's been very straight up and honest with me the whole time of like look it's very hard to give you answers when it's not a straight yes this is cancer uh -huh. or like no it's not cancer because the type of breast tissue that i have is in the highest percentile of density so it's very hard to like see and be able to like scope out what's actually going on without actually going in there so she was wow. like if it changes in six months and it looks funky it gets bigger it doesn't go away it starts to hurt we'll go in and like do something about it couldn't we just take like a theragun to your titty and break it up you know what you could right it would fucking hurt it would fucking hurt but but i also don't want to release the beast in the middle east if there's something happening that's in there. so fair wow i'm still stuck on you of dense titty tissue which is so funny because you think of dense titty tissue being like big knockers doesn't matter no but i guess it's more like yours is you maybe do have huge boobs but they never like they never spread out they just stayed crouched together they never sprouted like a flower yeah, they, they just, just like, stayed tight well think of a seed versus a tree they're, they're seedlings trust me they're <laughs> they're tiny titties but isn't that wild that I is wild like, okay. wait so then how do you feel like because i i personally hate this let's monitor them like let because i'll manufacture a sharp shooting pain in something here's the thing i know it's runs in my family so i think even just knowing that for most of my life of knowing that it skips generations and my mom didn't have yeah. like the thing and i was always going to be at risk i was always kind of like nervy like, okay, this is that i knew and trust me with how much shit goes on in my pussy um, with get, how many scares it's like a multi-level bar where there's like what's in this room yeah it's like oh upstairs let's worry about downstairs there's a rodeo. downstairs is cool yeah let's go back upstairs to the disco oh god there's a fight oh my there's god a fight it's in the champagne the whole room buildings on fire yeah they're throwing fucking pubes out <laughs> truly it's i i don't get really i'm not worried at all i've i've had fibroids i've had cysts i've had complications i've had leap procedures i've had cervical carcinomas and situs i've had enough to be like if it happens, what am I going to do? My body is going to just keep being a body. And all I can do is take care of it the best I can. God, we were just talking off pod about like my our, depression. Yeah, your depression kind of vaguely. We didn't use that word. But like, you know, like searching for purpose. Like, is, is this is this enough? Is this enough? Is this right? But the amount of things that you have just cleared, the hurdles in your life, you have just effortlessly, oh my God. Up, up to me, cleared blows my mind i think i'm just dramatic you said six words i didn't know <laughs> a situ was carcinoma that a word? in situ okay so it's a french carcinoma i think it's like latin for like where it is and how what level of carcinoma if a doctor is. ever says ever says those words to me you're gonna punch him i'm gonna punch him yeah right in the butthole but um i really my hat's off my hat's on you're at it now! 
<laughs> and it's not off, but metaphorically, it's off Thank to you, you for dealing with all these things. You know what's wild? Thank you. I, I'm trying to be better at receiving compliments. So I'm just going to say that was received thank you it actually means a lot to me because sometimes i feel like i the struggle is very lonesome <laughs> oh my god i and again i hate to hear because you are one of my friends who doesn't ever doesn't really ever Aww. put things on yeah. me and so Which in my head wild. you're just like always good i feel like i put stuff on you isn't that oh, funny no, you don't no i no, feel no. like sometimes i just talk about my problems too much but too. i love that and mm. you definitely do not you've never I've never been like even a slight eye roll. Me neither with you, actually. You're always very entertaining with your drama. Yeah, I'm like, for give sure. Give me more. Give me the juice. See, this is the thing. Like mm. you said, nothing matters. Nothing matters. So it's just like, let's just do it. Like, That's my depression. I was like, nothing matters. You actually are the one that was like, nothing matters because nothing does matter. Nothing matters. You can take it to a sad place or you can take it to a really fun place. Let's say fun. Yeah. Let's go fun fetty with it, with my depression. <laughs> let's turn that frown into a clown. And your let's birthday cake flavor depression <gasps> yes speaking of diet trends check out last week's episode um do you have any housekeeping um you're gonna be in chicago is, i'm gonna be in chicago performing at zany's which is a great comedy club in chicago illinois mm. that's september 7th through 9th um i'm also opening for taylor tomlinson Fun. in phoenix and las vegas i think that's the 14th through the 17th i want to go to vegas i think we should make that happen that would be so right fun. just for like a day yeah I, well i'm a tra i'm a day traveler now yes, i go to cities are. for 24 hours and back now yes you fucking are oh i will say i got like i get um i'm very excited okay do you have any passive income things no okay so because I have comedy clips on, and this is, I was going to say this when I was peeing and I forgot, you should start doing stand up. Does that overwhelm you? <laughs> no, not at all because I've done it before. Yeah. Or you should start doing it again. And I wasn't good at it. I don't see, but I didn't know how to do it. Well, I know, but like you are smart, you're capable, you've seen it. You could, abs I'm just saying because <laughs> I get these like monthly residuals for my stand up playing on XM airwaves. Fun. So it's like every every month around this time, I get this random money deposited into my account, and I'm like, oh, Fuck. for oh. being just being me, yeah. And the concept that like the more clips I get out there, the more notoriety I get, the more people are looking for me. Like, the more, I have a friend who has like two or three comedy albums. She makes between three and nine k <gasps> on the thing that I'm making between one hundred and nine hundred. Wow, I know. Honestly, the thing that's stopping me from going back into stand up besides straight white men that I had to deal with back yeah, in the day yeah. is the the nighttime of it all. Oh, honey. If preach. stand up wasn't for breakfast, I would do it. I would have I'd be the fucking I, Robin yep. Williams of breakfast stand up. I tell people this all the time. I'm like if I could do like a corporate show for Spotify headquarters at like 9 a.m. Oh. I'd be in heaven. Billionaire. 20 grand or something. Oh my God. Um, yeah. I but the thing is like too, and I say no to like eleven PM shows or like if I'm booked on a ten PM show, I was like, I'll do it, but like I have to go up like first. Or you'll leave. Yeah, I mean, I just tell them that before I accept the booking. I'm like, yeah. can I go up for after the host? And they're yeah. like, Yeah, definitely. Cause I I can't go on at eleven forty PM. No. I'm no. I i i have been asleep for, for many two and a half hours. hours. <laughs> <laughs> in a way this is stand up ish for me but when i get to tell a story for like the third time to a different group of friends i'm like oh this is good now because you're it's honing been worked it out Dude, yeah this is what i'm saying and also there are other avenues like the moth like the storytelling yeah, competition yeah you're right i just like i i see that for you i think it would also as we continue to grow this podcast audience when we like travel <gasps> We yes. could like be doing like bits and stuff. Oh my god! And go do shows together. But also like us just doing this would be a fucking hoot and a holler. Let's manifest a mini tour for this podcast. Absolutely. Please, we can absolutely do that. Actually, y'all comment somewhere or wherever like your city or where yeah. you think we should. Because obviously, I'm, my first thing is like West Coast tour. Yeah, where you do like San Diego, San, San Francisco, Fresno, or something. Yeah, well, I don't know. Seattle. Yeah, that'd be very cool. Yeah. But like, yeah, weigh in. Let weigh us know. in. Um, that was your housekeeping. Did yeah. you have any t -t -t's? Oh, we were gonna do a dating no filter. Oh my god, do we do dating no filters at the top? We can. Or do before we, we go to our the, break. Okay. 
because we can fill a little bit of time with this and then go into our cruise. Great. Um, I feel like we haven't done a dating no filter in so long, and we apologize for that. Um, Kelsey's been in a depression. Yes, and birthday cake flavored really hard to work with i don't blame you (laughs) um you have been perfect no notes um dating no filter is a segment where we give you advice that we are clearly not qualified to give but we did do a show together for three seasons three seasons two seasons two seasons and it's christmas special like 44 episodes e called dating no filter where we were lgbtqia commenters on dates so we do people people loved it we're also sluts (laughs) um okay here is a question actually i don't know which one i want to ask this one's kind of fun do a fun one no let's do this one i don't even know what this means okay this is from anonymous my partner and i have been together since 2019 and living together since 2020 we are both in our early 20s and were raised in the latter-day saints aka (gasps) mormon church he is poly and i'm not I have always been extremely supportive of him being in other relationships and seeing going on dates with other people in part because I know at the end of the day, I am his person. Mm. However, after breaking up with his abusive ex, he has not been with anyone else, even though I get the vibe he would want to. He has also suggested that I may not be as monosexual slash romantic as I think I am, but I don't even wear to... I don't even know where to start exploring. I have only ever been in a sexual relationship with my current partner and feel some amount of guilt thanks to my religious trauma, even watching porn. I want to continue supporting him and encourage him to do things that make him happy. I also want to explore my own sexuality more, but have no idea where to start. For some context, both of us are AFAB. What does that mean? Assigned female at birth. Oh, thank you. And he went to BYU. Prior to dating... Brigham Young University. Yeah, that's the Mormon school. Prior to dating him, I also considered myself as a lesbian, but now that feels incorrect. So maybe bi, question mark, question mark, question mark. So if I'm getting this right, both assigned female at birth, one transitioned to Mm -hmm. male Mm -hmm. and went to Brigham Young, Mm -hmm. which automatically seems like a roller coaster. How fun. And is Polly and also grew up LDS. So I wonder if there's mormonism attached to the polyamory of their because that's oh, polygamy that's interesting which people often confuse the it's two it's like the but framework is there yeah the blueprints are there or is it like so anti-polygamy that like poly is almost the other end of the spectrum because polygamy feels like it's very rooted in sexism and religion and male hierarchy yeah for sure fuck guys I patriarchy. thought you were going to say, fuck God. And I was like, hey. <laughs> bye, 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 monetization. <laughs> um, okay, so, and then I'm, so, and then this person writing in identified as a lesbian previously, but potentially bisexual. Well, yeah, because now they're in a relationship with a, of a guy. woman. Oh, yeah, excuse me, a guy. And they are a woman who is potentially bi because they were lesbian before. So, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. and what I'm hearing is that their partner... Is very exploratorial. But hasn't been recently since dating an abusive ex. Which, bummer, hearts and go then out. And he also suggested that she may not be as monosexual or romantic as I think, but I don't even know where to start exploring. Okay, so first of all, that's none of their business. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, but this is the thing. Like, I mean, I, I don't want you to start exploring because someone else thinks you should because start exploring. Because I am exploring. Yeah, but yeah. also, like, I hate to hear that you are like shame you feel shame watching porn so that's honestly what stuck out to me I maybe was like, oh. maybe it's like watch porn watch porn by yourself or watch porn together maybe in different fun categories yeah to just see like what explore you might like. and mm-hmm. really unprogram that like learning that it's bad because it's not it's beautiful as long as it's like the the content creators are have created the content in like a very like okay way. yeah eth- Great word. Did you just come up with that? I just invented it right now. Ethical. Damn, ethical. Yeah. I think that's going to go. I think go. it'll catch it's on. It's going to really be. <laughs> um, but yeah, as long as it's like ethically sourced porn. Yeah. Enjoy yourself. And then I would say after that, get on some dating apps and just mm, chat. Just chat. Yeah. Just even see what it feels like to dip your toe into talking in to people that you uh, you could potentially be. <clears throat> well, the, the thing I also heard her say was that she's nev- she's only ever been in a sexual relationship with this partner this current partner yep that's scary i mean okay that's a big i say deal. that's scary in that it's like that to me is daunting because it's like you don't know anything i else. don't even know where to 
where to start yeah and that's what brought you here you know what's crazy is sir and i met a couple at, at a festival we went to two weeks ago and they were so fun so outgoing so cool our age and we're like man you guys have been together however long and they were like we were actually high school sweethearts and i went <gasps> i go can i ask a really personal question <laughs> have you ever fucked other people and they said nope just each other and i stood on my chair and screamed and they were like wow we've never gotten that reaction <laughs> before wait what venue was this uh outside lands oh okay, okay. and i was just like it, which is so funny because we talked about us being open and they were like wow that's crazy and i was like no that's crazy you're to me. crazy like we were just so opposite ends of the spectrum but here's the thing i would have never guessed that about them because of the way they go through life and so it made me just have to check myself of being like just because someone's only had sex with one person doesn't mean they don't have a fulfilling doesn't mean they're not fun as fuck and crazy and kooky and i will say high school sweethearts who have only had sex with each other does not go to outside lands to me mm. like it just that already throws they're me fun they were like they travel all the time they like and how old do you think they were my age our age whoa yeah. whoa yeah it, it was weird it was weird for me to be like i like hanging out with you guys and you're nothing like me because i'm friends with a bunch of big old sluts well also do you think you. that like thank you uh do you think that your early sex life determines your the rest of your sex life i think i think you start making habits yeah that are harder to break the older you get yeah so i'd almost say to this person early 20s now's the time to break out of a habit if you find it detrimental to your own sexuality yeah if you're feeling there's some lack there explore but be patient with yourself she did say she used to be a lesbian i'm wondering if she misses that part of her identity a little bit absolutely you must women are superior i'm just gonna say it uh, as a woman in her 50s i will agree with that <laughs> that's what i am i know it deep down i do too you, you act and dress like one 50s. um my advice is to not listen to anyone else tune including in, us including us <laughs> tune into yourself really ask yourself am i doing things out of fear from a place of lack for from fomo Peer pressure and if you were to do something and you're kind of in a sweet spot that like your partner is poly and does wouldn't shame or guilt you for doing things where like a lot I of it they'd be thrilled yeah so it's like are you doing it for them are you doing it for yourself do you feel safe doing this do you feel supported it's for me it's only a question you can answer yourself but where to get started i think it's the apps i think it's porn porn i think it's taking yourself out on some solo dates mm. love a solo date to i people. love a solo date i'm just overly social and very flirtatious by nature so i think it is a privilege to say that but if you can you're also solo... very introverted you know i am like i mean a people. lot okay a lot i stay in yeah but when i'm out i'm out you're out you're out same with you i agree I love people and I hate people. It ex it coexists perfectly. That's that coexist bumper sticker, but it's like <laughs> you flipping people off. Me being inside versus me being outside. Yes, dude. Yeah, I mean, I'm a I'm a a joy to be around when I want to be. When you want to be. Um. <laughs> so that's some pretty good advice. Did that I think. help? I feel like that. I feel like that was very good. It, listener, if this is you, will you please also come back to give us an answer? Yeah, on give how us you're a follow-up. Um, you could say where how do we distinguish them? Um Well, you just DM us, be like, yo, that was me. Okay, great. And it also makes me very happy that someone who's in like a queer or like a dynamic relationship or poly relationship, I didn't know if it was a queer relationship or not, but a poly relationship that like was a former religious kid listens to this podcast. Oh, I love that. Um Zach, when do we come back? What are we talking about? Cruising! Oh! oh. oh. What was that? Toot, toot, boot, boot, splish, splash. I'm taking a bath in a cruise ship, honey, honey. Talk to me about your cruise experience. Bitch, when I tell you we were a cruise family. Really? Because you lived in Florida. We were a Royal Caribbean left and right. I think I'm going on a Royal I think our ship is a Royal Caribbean. I can, I'm, I'm privileged in that we did cruises out of Florida. We would fly to Europe and do them because we thought that was the best way to see multiple countries. 
Uh, this was also all my parents doing, so I didn't have a choice. I didn't know better. But did you fight it or did you go along? Or? Oh, I went along. But here's the thing. I was a nasty little teenager. And I often used these cruises as opportunities to underage drink and flirt with boys and of girls. Of course. And then that would result in me sleeping in and not going on the excursions or going to see. Like, I didn't go to, like, Bethlehem. Or wherever we stopped, because I was Fuck like, "Fuck that place!" I'm fucking hungover, bitch. So and did I was, your parents know you were hungover? Yeah, but they were like, "Uh, that's Kelsey." It's vacation. My mom's number one thing on vacation has always been everyone gets to do what they want to do. No one has to do anything. Oh my god! Yeah, that's a beautiful. She's like, "I'm going because I'm here and I want to go to do this." Thing. Yeah. The you only thing she not. asks is that we take one photo together with Santa Claus hats on, so that it can be our Christmas card. Cute. That's all she asks on the ship anywhere i might actually steal that because that's cute. <laughs> go for it right take it um cruise ships love the kids club love the idea of a limited amount of time you only have two weeks to make a boyfriend make two out weeks? and get out sometimes it was two weeks oh my god <laughs> that is i will go on record as saying that is too long agreed two we I mean, sometimes they would be like a week. Your so. circadian rhythm would ad adjust to the shit to the ocean. Yeah, which is quite quite wild because you're moving around. Yeah. <laughs> um, was always uh terrified of nighttime. Like I did not like going up to the top and looking because, around. Like, it was like darkness, and it you're was like, oh, we are so, so dark. alone. I felt claustrophobic. I get that. Um, loved. It being a mini city on water. It, and that's what they are. It's like an adult playground. But I was a teen. Went on one as an adult for my exes. Dirty 30. Realized I'm a little bit snobby with my amenities. I'm like, I need nice mattresses. I need good quality aesthetic. Sure. I do think Royal Caribbean is that bitch. Oh, great. Yeah. Wait, what was the Dirty 30 cruise experience like? Carnival. Oh, no. And were you drinking then? no okay not yet no not yet no just pe no period just no period what's your cruise ship experience all so, gay <laughs> no my first one ever was straight a college senior college senior spring break trip oh we fuck drove to florida and i just unlocked an, a memory of my own we got there like the night before we could board right oh my god we crashed on the couch and floor of a guy who ate my ass in the parking lot of a bar went like two years prior. <gasps> what? I, he was horrified in by it Florida? too. Florida? Yeah. Cause I remember he would li like move to Florida. And so I texted him. I was like, can me and my oh. friends like crash at your place? And they let us. That is college. In That's a nutshell. College. In a butt shell. In a butt shell where you really risk it all. You have no you have no shame. No shame. Nothing to lose, nothing to gain. You're just living. You're just fucking living. You're getting I, a butt. I got a fucking um fake tan. Immediately <sighs> tried to get it off because it was not good. If you could, if you can believe that in two thousand and eight the misting technologies of tan places were not all that top shelf. Yeah. So I so I heard that if you do lemon, like rub yep, lemon on scrub. it. Um, I found the one gay, openly gay guy. He wasn't open. He was a Marine and he was closeted. Oh my. Who cut two saw me do a taping of a live set years later in San Diego. The world is too small. And it's I hate that for you. Too <laughs> small, especially the gay world. Yeah. Like, I mean, y'all know each other. We know each other by, by butt alone. By butt alone. Anyway. So we did this. Wait, was, did you get your tan off? Half. Okay. That it was, was like it pooled, of course, on the like the knuckles, knuckles and the creases, the knees, and the crosses, yeah. the, the neck, ankles, like a couple places. And I am not meant to be tan. No, God doesn't want me to be tan. Sure doesn't. I'm white or pink. That's it. You're pink. Thank you. You're sitting on a pink couch, pink blanket. I blend same right color. In. It's like camouflage. It really is. Um. So I tried to couldn't. I was. We snuck in two liter bottles of liquor. How much fun is sneaking things on a cruise? I mean, you, they've gotten crafty. You have to, because I don't think that flies anymore. No, but we also were in like, if we're, if it was the Titanic, we were in steerage. <laughs> like it was like looking back, they were it, like, "Are you sure you want to book these?" It was horrible because I think there were multi. I think there were like 
at least two of us per room. It might have been bunk beds. And you're in the, you're definitely on the inside. You don't have windows. Yep. Yeah. Yep. I forget what those are called. Um, inner galley. Yeah. yeah. Truly, but I was drunk the whole time. Mm -hmm. Uh, me and my friends had fake cruise names. What? That's which was fun. me and my friend Tess pretended to be twins, <laughs> like twin brother and sister. And oh, and the first port, we docked, and I ran the opposite way because I was blackout drunk, and I jumped off the end of the the boat dock between the ships, not like towards land wait i'm sorry like what <laughs> you know how the boats all kind of dock on a long strip yes. i went tearing off the opposite direction that wait, everyone when you got off the boat yeah like when we docked in our first place okay you get everyone's off the going boat. back to everyone gets off the boat to go towards the beach yeah i ran down the dock the opposite way because you were drunk, drunk idiot. and jumped off in like and i was like swimming between the boats and they were Zachary. like <laughs> that is so, so dangerous. stupid so stupid i also lost my id when i was like in a, one of the ports and i was like oh they're not gonna let me back on the ship like well i was crying again like drunk they let me back on you know there's cruise jails oh oh and morgues oh i didn't think about that that's dark yeah people with <sighs> when it's five thousand people someone dies yeah someone dies i think every gay cruise <sighs> i've done Someone's died? Someone has died. Of what? Drug overdose. Oh, that's dark again. We it changes. Dark. Also, did you know that because elderly health care is so bad in the United States, some people just book cruises back to back to back until they, until they die? I actually knew some couples that did that. We, like, made friends with elderly. Because you know how they, like, sit you with people you don't always know for dinners? Yeah, fuck that. It was always kind of fun to be like, who it, think sometimes it was, when? sometimes it was fun. And yeah. if you were drunk, who yeah. fucking cared? And we were friends with a couple of old people that did that. I'll also never forget my, well, maybe I shouldn't say who it was, but someone in my family drank eight chocolate martinis on a cruise ship and died. Yacked everywhere chocolate martini all over. And then went to jail? No, nothing happened. They've become elderly since? It's I'm trying just to connect it. so insane that oh, yeah. you can drink eight martinis also that you can order two lobsters and one steak <laughs> and three lava cakes and they're like coming right up and a 24-hour ice cream machine oh dude dude some of these cruises they have like 24-hour pizza place 24-hour soft serve i'm not gonna lie in another life where i went to musical theater school and completed it i'm on a cruise performing living my fucking truth of course i'm the star because, because you are the star I'm the star. It's of Royal Caribbean, but you're the star. You're the royal court. You're, you're in the quick change outfit, and you do the turn, and you land on I'm the... I'm walking around the boat. People are like, oh, Kelsey, oh I loved God. it last night. Oh I'm, I'm in Turks and so Caicos, great. and my Turks and Caicos girlfriend comes to meet me, <gasps> kiss her, fly, go to France next week, see my little boyfriend, boy toy over there. Uh, Jacques. Jacques. Jacques cock. <laughs> Um, but here's the thing, Zach, you are kind of that. You do these gay cruises all the time where you're kind of the star. I'm about to, well, no. Because you do stand up. I'm not one of on the headliners. Cruises. Okay. So this comedy works that either they have like a headliner. Well, they always have like a big comic, but the big comic does like one show mm -hmm. like on Thursday night. Mm -hmm. So sometimes they like literally get on the ship Wednesday, perform Thursday, get fly. off Friday. Yeah. But um, I'm one of the four, we'll say like, lower level comics just below headliner and we do split bill shows yeah so i'll have three 20 minute sets incredible in the week could not be more perfect for you i mean gay cruises audience i mean contained 20 minutes your strongest I mean, shit yes and you're having fun having fun meeting people writing jokes that everyone can like get <sighs> because you're on, on the, the cruise yeah. yeah i did this joke that i developed last year about how we should have um, like a running of the twinks mm. where we lube all the twinks up and then we try to catch them <laughs> or like one, one lubed up twink. And if you catch them, you get your alcohol bill <gasps> wiped clean. Oh, that's fine. But and if, if the they twink, fall like, overboard, who cares? Yeah, They're I mean, just like seals. Twinks. They're probably buoyant. Yeah. But um, <laughs> yeah, no, they are a dream. My first paid gig ever was on a gay cruise that skewed wow. much older. It was like Ooh. nine years ago now. And I did an HIV joke. Well, I did an AIDS joke. And I have never <laughs> lost a crowd. You don't say. More instant. Like, I. Are we. Huh? Are we far past enough to bring it back? Well, this is the thing. The joke had been 
killing, no pun intended, oh. in LA. Okay. But this was like an elderly gay cruise. Where many. Where they had the, like, yeah, lost all their lovers funny. and all their friends. Context is key. Yeah. And I didn't put that together because I was a dumb little demon twink. I had not stopped drinking yet. Mm. And um, yeah, so they almost threw me off the ship. And that was night <gasps> one. <laughs> You were like, I'm going to come back to these for the rest of my career. Well, they didn't ask me back for five years. Ooh. But the rest of the week, I'd get old men coming. Are you that foul mouth twink everyone's talking about? What was the joke? It's very funny. It's <laughs> I thought you were going to be like, it's very poor tasting. No, it's great. I stand by it. The joke is, I love gay pride, but it's always a little bit more trouble than it's worth. Like this summer, as soon as I got there, my phone died of AIDS. <laughs> I just kept filling it with random dude's numbers and it died of AIDS. Zach. That's so funny. It's so stupid. It's so stupid. Because it's like, I'm sorry, sir. Did you lose a Palm Pilot to <laughs> HIV? No. <laughs> Calm down. And then I also had some kind of like 40 year old HIV positive men come up and be like, I thought that joke was really funny. And it's only funny because you can do it because you're gay. Yeah. 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 And to be clear, no one knows my HIV status. It's negative, Ooh. but still. Like, <laughs> you should say you should add that bumper. <laughs> be like, yeah, I got kicked off a gay cruise for that one once. But which five is bullshit. Be- <laughs> <laughs> it's it's, it's negative, negative, but still. <laughs> they didn't know that. They didn't know that. Um, but yeah, I'm excited. That's where I met Bob the drag queen. Bob was sober. Oh, we and that's love like Bob. the reason I started trying sobriety, basically. Aww. And um, So you're my Bob. Yeah. Wow, how's it that's feel? kind of a a cool way of looking at it. Like sober family. I'm like your your drag daughter. Drag daughter. What would my drag name be? Oh my. Okay, so I've been sitting on this one, but I'm not going to use it. So poly glamorous. That's me. Instead of polyamorous. It's so obviously me. Poly glamorous. Duh. Mine's white cheddar. Of course it is. <laughs> of course Isn't that it a is. Great drag name. Yeah. White cheddar. Yeah. She's cheesy. Ooh, I can already see. Am I a drag king? You know what? I'm going to go on record as saying drag kings are... Careful. (laughs) (laughs) I think it's that I don't see enough of them for my brain to wrap my head around it. Okay. I just don't see them enough represented. So it's like, it's so... I don't even... Is it supposed to be funny? Yeah. Because it's very funny. It is funny. Especially because... Drag queens are massive women, yeah. and drag kings are little tiny men. little lady. <laughs> <laughs> so I'm just like, this is adorable. You're like, like I, don't I want... date you. You're my size. Like, yeah, what's going on, Danny DeVito over here? Stop. Um, but how did we get so far away from? No, we're on cruises. Okay, go that ahead. was my first gig. Anyway, but I'm about to do the Mediterranean cruise. The first time ever doing that. I'm excited. But I thought we'd talk about cruise stuff. Let's talk about cruise stuff. So where do you think the first cruise? like started your mom's house she is a fucking well-traveled port if you know what i mean <laughs> no she listened to this mom Hi, i did mom. not mean that i did although i think my mom was like quote unquote fun in high school oh, and college she was a good time girl good time girl i mean she was she is gorgeous but she like i'll show you pictures when she was our age or younger oh yeah she's hot, hot. Uh, long hair with an af the dog the afghan so they look oh, like they kind of like looked like uh-huh. similar, like a cartoon like yeah. duo. um kind of related to being a slut and ships my last name or no excuse me my first oh is it my first name or my last name i don't really remember i think it's dara means island of many ships which Stop. like isn't that funny yeah because like many me. relationships bitch we ship you docking in and out docking you know what docking is in the you put your PPs together and you with the foreskin the and you yeah. rub them back and forth. Y'all are so creative. I fucking love being gay so much. Um, okay. Where was the first cruise? Italy. Ah! 1831. Wait, hold on. Hard pause. What? Because there's been ships for a long time. Yeah, but no one had fun on them until 1831. Oh, I was going to ask what No was one, the... like, I don't think anyone willingly got on a Wanted boat to. unless they, like, kind of had to. It, or, like, owned it. Sure. Okay. Like uh, pirates. Um, and I will say, I'm about to say this ocean liners are different from cruises because ocean liners also double as like transporting Coffee. goods and stuff. Good. So, um, okay. So the Francesco, that's what it's called. <laughs> Don't be insensitive. Okay. Um, sailed for three months. No. I know. First cruise ever was three months long. 
but it was only like princes and nobles and aristocracy. Okay, wait, I'm back in. It was not for the poor. It was like it was like one of your sex parties. Honestly, three months is longer than some of my relationships, and with all those royal members, I'm back in. This is the thing, though. It's we're talking, I think, like a wooden ship. Like this, you mean there weren't like stripper poles and LED lights and ice cream bars? <laughs> That'd be incredible. Okay, if we ever get a time machine, we should bring those things to that <laughs> to that world. Can you imagine being like, you can go back in time anyway? And we're like, let's go to the first cruise. Let's bring stripper poles. <laughs> um, okay, it wasn't until 1844 that P and O, which is just the biggest, cru- the world's first cruise line, basically made leisure trips available to non-rich, famous people. Oh, interesting. Um, the first cruise cruise with electricity wouldn't be till 1889. Ooh, okay. Yeah. The pieces are coming together. Oh, and then now we're getting to Titanic territory. Well, I'm so glad you said oh, that. No. Luxury cruises began making transatlantic crossings more competitive <gasps> with ocean liners. Oh, because shit. They were like, okay, we're doing this for business. And it's like, well, we're doing this for pleasure. So, like, what's the incentive, basically? So, they would add luxury dining and staterooms to ocean liners. The most famous being <gasps> Titanic. Titanic. Yeah. Isn't that crazy? Also, it does make me giggle a little bit to be like, we had the whole world undiscovered back then. Like, we still, we like, people were like, let's go on a boat to vacation. Humans are by nature the dumbest animals on the planet. Copy that. Okay, carry on. Like, also, I'll have the moment too when I'm on the ship. I'm like, what am I? I'm just taunting nature. Yeah. I'm just asking for a tsunami to fucking wipe my shit eating grin off my I face. I watched that one movie where Poseidon it flips Adventure. over. And the, the old one or the new one? I have no idea. Was but Fergie in it? I think so. She was a lounge singer? Yes. And the dad tries to hold his breath. And he. that's the first time I've ever seen like someone drown where I'm like, I would hate to go that way. Drowning? But under what? Like that way, the way it happened with him, I was like. He's like. Yeah. Uh, uh, you guys can't see us but we're uh, and i was like absolutely no but doesn't he hit the button yeah that saves it, them? he dies and he's just like uh, boop oh Don't so it wasn't even on about. purpose no he died before and, and it, the man you're talking about is kurt russell sure did you know that was a remake of a movie from like the 60s did not or 70s i'd watch that again just to like get over my fear i mean right before you go on a cruise is that how that works mm. it's like watching final destination before going on a plane <laughs> That motherfucker is not real. <laughs> um, final is so good. Okay. Um, then guess what happened in the 1960s what? that fucked ships up? Global warming. Large passenger jet crafts. So people weren't using ships to like get places. They were using planes. So like, Wait, oh my God, because you're so right. Duh, obviously boats were the first Yeah, one. like that's how people, you couldn't take a train across no. the Atlantic. Yeah. Um. So now boats are all in decline <gasps> and people are no longer willing to take ocean liners that take forever and also double as shipping uh, ships. So deluxe cruise ships are made to pamper people. So now it's a luxury vacation. Come sail the high seas. Yeah, because up until the 70s and 80s, cruise ships were basically deck chairs, shuffleboard, and drinks with umbrellas. they did not get deluxe until like the 80s when they're like oh like we actually need to compete with flight and they were like how do we do that we make it a city yes they can't have 24 hour ice cream they hire performers to perform um games the cruise master which we should also change the name. I don't think it was called that. <laughs> that cruise person, director. The cruise, the cruise director. director truly does all the drugs. Must. I mean, it's so funny because I do Atlantis Gay Cruises and we have our own cruise director that pairs up with the <gasps> Royal Caribbean one. Oh, that's funny. And they kind of like play off each other. They're like, we're the better one. Well, kind of. It's like cute. Like if it's a straight guy with the cruise company, they'll like flirt with him the whole time and they'll be like for the gays translation that means yes exactly time someone's washing the poop deck if you know what i mean (laughs) um okay so as of december 2021 there were 323 cruise ships operating worldwide that actually doesn't seem like that many i know but when you think about big they are it still doesn't doesn't seem seem like like that that many. many I know I don't really understand numbers because it's like we were talking about (laughs) billions in the last one and then girl math 323 girl math if you would have asked me how many cruise ships in the world I probably would have said (laughs) 300,000 someday someday. um but that's a combined capacity this also shocked me as a low number 581,000 passengers that's it I know because don't you think of them as all being like 
5,000 people all the time, five in every port. If you would have asked me what the largest cruise ship held, like, I was 500,000. Four million people. Oh, well, no, that's the, so, so with the combined, all 323 cruise ships Full combined is 581,000. So it's that's not like one, one ship. I think the most people on one cruise ship is probably like under 10,000. Wow. I don't know anything. That's okay. That's why I made this podcast. Confidently, you don't know anything. Yeah. Okay. Cruising has become a major part of the tourism industry with Checks an estimated out. market of what amount per year do you think? <sighs> 60 million billion 60 million billion 29.4 billion whoa that's a lot the billion always trips me out it trips first of all huh billion feels like a relatively new number <laughs> like i wasn't hearing about it until five years ago capitalism baby but you know what i mean <laughs> people are like they're a billionaire i'm like yeah right we're using that term so loosely <laughs> now everyone's a billionaire yeah i'm a bazillionaire yeah. how about that <laughs> Um, the industry's rapid growth saw nine or more newly built ships catering to a North American clientele added every year since 2001 Ooh. until <gasps> COVID-19 in 2020 when the entire industry all but shut down and was, of course, bailed they should out. have called it COVID-20 because every time someone says COVID-19, I was like, it wasn't until 2020. What are you talking about? I know, but it's like the first bitch got sick. Bitch. In like December. Okay, fair. Okay. Um, this is like. We're transitioning into the dark side of cruises. Yes. Um, How many people die? <laughs> well, first of all, the crew are usually hired for three to 11 month contracts. Yeah. Working 77 hours per week. Oof. They share a room, Oof. a desk, a bathroom, and a shower. Oh, Some fuck. of them get tips. And this is where gay cruises wine so i have always the first like five gay cruises i went on i always kind of felt bad for the crew because it is like a multinationality based crew like uh -huh. a lot of people are from different countries the languages don't always overlap and they're so nice and like so smiley and bend over backwards meanwhile us gay dudes are walking around with our assholes exposed yes like they didn't ask for that no and yeah. like they are some there are crew who have definitely slipped on lube on a gay cruise like it looks like if you look down the hallway of a gay cruise it looks like a horror movie but with like lube you, instead of blood you should honestly you should have to like sign a waiver and get paid extra to be a crew member on well, no but get this huh. this is what i'm leaning to what it's often their favorite week of the year because <gasps> it's so fun because we tip oh bitch at least y'all know you messy as hell gay guys tip you messy and straight regular people snooty don't tip. you know old people are not tipping on cruise no, ships i think i i will go as far to say like the average like midwestern like head of the household is not tipping no. a crew you're like, like it's all inclusive it's all, you, get a, you get part of this right you i got, got a bracelet that gives me right? free soda yeah honey give me another one of these listen i'm not gonna say that also some cruise ships should not allow people on board but the 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 crew of people often make the trip like who who are you what am i trying to say like the other guests yeah are often like what makes a cruise ship experience fun oh sure and it's if you and becoming friends and get friends. like a dirty rotten crowd of people sometimes i'm like we should have gone for the more expensive cruise. oh well that's why i also can't stand it because i feel like non-gay cruises are very like isolating experiences like it's like families sticking to their own and yeah like, gay guys are like get over here. like fun yes. uh, or i know this is jake from blah 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 yeah. it's like it, gay cruises feel very like summer camp community yeah see and i think as a teen it felt that way for me as an adult you're so right it's like me and my boo going to this massage and then going on an excursion hoping to like make friends with one other couple oh i also skipped over one thing and that was that um do you remember that did you ever hear the ship of uh, the show called the love boat I've heard of it. Yeah, it's like it really it was in the 70s and it popularized cruises being a romantic getaway. And that really helped. <gasps> oh, fun. Okay, so these are some horror stories. Great, let's hear. Okay. In January 20 of 2015, a passenger on a Royal Caribbean cruise fell off of the ship near Cozumel, Mexico. Always. A passenger sitting on his balcony on the Disney Cruise Line ship heard screams for help. <gasps> the Disney Cruise Line 
rescued the man who was treated and then flown back home to the United States. He survived? Yes, he fell off his ship and was picked up by another one. Dude. I know. If you fall off a cruise ship, usually that's like the number one guarantee. Ain't no way you're even finding your body. Oh, in the ocean? Bitch, it's big. Did you know that? The ocean is the big. The ocean is... Wait, do we talk about this with like... Does a, a cup of ocean water sound familiar to you? No. So like... People are like, is there life in space? And the answer to that is not as far as like we can tell necessarily, but we've explored as much space as if you took a cup of ocean water. <sighs> That's okay. I'm not ready for that. Zach. I know. It doesn't it make you sick. D carry on. And she's like, so of course there's not a living thing in this cup of water. Oh my God. Look. And then you think about like blue whales and you're like, imagine the blue whale of space, bitch, compared to a cup of water. Oh, my God. So much left okay. to discover. Okay, hit me. In March of 2013, toilets and elevators stopped working halfway through a seven day cruise on the carnival carnival dream. There's quote, there's human waste all over the floor in some of the bathrooms and they're overflowing into the staterooms. Passenger, into the room? Passenger Greg Stark told CNN, Carnival Cruises uh, cruise lines had to fly passengers back to Florida. <laughs> They received a three a, a three day refund and a half price cruise in the future. As if you wanted to go back to Carnival. If poop comes out of the toilet <laughs> into my room, I better not be seeing half anything. <laughs> I get full. If, I want a whole cruise I, ship. Yes. Yes. It's the SS Zach Noe Towers. SS. Zach? If my poop comes back to haunt me, absolutely not. In June 2020, 2020, 2020, in June 2012, <laughs> a group of men were hired to mingle with passengers on a Holland America gay cruise. Ew, I don't like where this is going. When passengers saw photographers and videographers filming the men, they worried that pornography was being filmed on the ship. Oh, nice. The men were forced off of the ship at what? the first port of call, which was Tunisia, in the middle of the Arab Spring uprising. <gasps> According to the Wisconsin Gazette, random, the men were hired models who had limited money, no Tunisian vis visas, no means of return passage, and no ability to speak the local language. The men sued the cruise line and Holland America. Well, yeah. Wild. Were they porn stars? I mean, probably. So unclear. Also, because okay, so one of the last cruises I went on was the big one. It's like the January cruise. It's yeah. out of Fort Lauderdale. It's like 5,000 men. It's like an OnlyFans creator summit, basically. Love. And someone posted a video on Twitter just getting railed with like the ship's name, name in the right, background. right in the background. Souls. And so it's like, guys, we got to be smarter about this. You can't. That's also terrifying because like there's that law about the ocean being their own neutral laws. water or whatever, like pirates. So they literally were like, we vote you off. Walk I the know. plank. And it's like, bye. I hope those men are all right. I just saw a vampire movie that took place on a ship. The first cruise huh. ship. Huh. Not really. Okay, oh. so but I saw the movie. Okay. Um, in January 2012, the Costa Concordia, a 4,200 passenger cruise liner, was brought too close to shore in Italy and struck rocks, which Whoop. tore a giant hole in its side. Whoops! The ship ran aground and sank. <gasps> the captain of the Concordia was eventually sentenced to 16 years in prison after 32 passengers died. Yeah, you can't run into rocks, my His guy. Charges included delaying evacuation and abandoning ship before all of his passengers and crew had been rescued. Dog, have you not seen the Titanic? You go down with your ship, kid. I know. And you evacuate. I feel like you should evacuate. You Better safe than sorry. Like, it, once you hit it, you you go. You're like, oh, my God, I did not see that rock there. Also, it is And you leave incredible. a note on the rock. <laughs> Watch out. What's incredible? I forgot. Oh, really? I, truly, I was, I was so enamored by your joke. Did you see the triangle of sadness? Yes, I loved it. Do you, okay, I think, see, you're a survivalist. I think you'd thrive in any oh, of those. Oh, I would become the woman, oh, spoiler alert, I'd become the woman who runs who, yeah. the, like, the here's island. Here's a piece of fish, and I'll yeah. eat my puss. And then I beat the girl to death who tries to escape. Do you think that's what happened? Oh, yeah. Damn. Yeah. Damn. Um. Well, that's actually all I have for cruise stuff. <gasps> that was so much. Was it? And we're going to miss you, but the... Confidants won't know it because we're recording enough it's episodes. Like I'm literally probably on the ship right now, hopefully Get with an Italian railed. tongue in my booty. Listen, you're going to have a great time. I am. Um, hey, speaking of being a slut, why don't you get a sticker that announces your slut Slut pills. Get slut pill stickers. You can Venmo me at Kelsey Dara. What you think it's worth. If you're internationally shipped, please include a dollar sixty-seven for shipping. That was a dollar forty-nine. Oh, did I just Are you it? embezzling? Oh, my God. 
I don't know why is it a dollar. Or have you been short? Maybe you've been shorting yourself. I guess we'll never know. You have to buy a sticker to find burn, out. Burn, burn, burn. Uh, please rate this on iTunes to help us get seen. If you're not going to rate it five stars, please don't rate it at all because we are sensitive. sensitive. And until next week, bye. bye. Just got.